Welcome back to the show. Now it's time to talk to singer-songwriter Lisa Quay. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Chrissy. How are you, my love? I'm good, thank you. Now I'm looking forward to your performance later on before thank we finish. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> now you've been through a few things in life, but you're, you're singing and you're writing songs at the moment. But yes. we were talk, having a bit of a chat earlier. Yes. And you said some of the things that you've actually been through have helped you write those songs. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, similar to the, the gentleman earlier, I was actually bullied at school as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I know how hard that is to, to overcome in adulthood. Um, and then in young adulthood, at 23, I, uh, a meteorite landed in my garden in the name of uh, cancer. Mm. Um, you know, you're going about your business and yeah. life's great and everyone's out having a good time. And then, uh, yeah, so that was a very, very difficult time. Mm -hmm. um, and from sort of finding out I had it till actually feeling like I was over it and back into proper mm. swing of things was probably about four years really? of my oh. young sort of 20s. Um, so, but I tried to look at it in a, in a positive way that um, I, I actually saw a counsellor whilst I was having um, treatment mm -hmm. and they said to me in one way you're very lucky because you've learned all the lessons in life early on before yeah. you get old mm -hmm. so you can use harness that um, information to help you through your 30s and 40s that, that's a really good way of looking at things yeah. isn't it because on the one hand you can say oh why me i'm so young that's and what like, i said at first yeah yeah but then it's true you you learn to appreciate things yep. you learn to go for things and not waste time you just carry exactly on right which was what led me to music because i yeah. thought well what is it i really want to do mm -hmm. um and that's when i well just as i was sort of getting better physically um, my dad said to me, oh, let's, let's go and, you know, learn an instrument or something together. And we actually went to a guitar group together and that was the start of music, of the journey of music for me. Oh, so. Now, was, was music always an interest for you, though, beforehand? Absolutely, or? yeah, since I was a little girl. I mean, you know, vinyls in my bedroom, <laughs> constantly singing, learning lyrics, dancing. Yeah. My household was full of music. My brothers were DJs. Um, mm. My dad's great on the piano and the, and the drums and the guitar. My mum's always listening oh, to the wow, radio. Oh, so, family. Yeah, I'm sure the neighbours didn't enjoy our family, <laughs> but... Uh, Probably not. <laughs> but it's great that you, you love what you do. Yes. Now, what keeps you going? Because obviously you do face challenges and, you know, you go... Um, I think wanting to have a voice in the world, uh, it sounds weird. I mean, you can, you can sort of make your mark on this world in very many different ways, but I mm -hmm. found that the way I would like to share my human experience is through music. Yeah. Um, and I find that music's one of the avenues that um, brings people together. Mm -hmm. um, it gives people something to discuss. It's kind of like in the old days, it's kind of like taken over from philosophy. Yeah. We now all talk about music and yeah, how musical people affect our lives, what they say, how they think, what they wear, culture. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to use music as my, my voice to the world. Yeah. And what about uh, maybe like I said, you know, to our previous guests about youngsters watching now and they're, they're something, something negative has happened in their life. Maybe they're, they're not well or something like that. And they're feeling like, oh, what's the point of even trying now? Because I've got to deal with this. What would you, what advice would you give to them? Um, it's really weird, but in every kind of dark cloud, I know it's really cliche, but there mm -hmm. is a silver lining. There is an opportunity to learn from something bad yeah. that happens to you. Mm -hmm. So try to think about that and think, what is this trying to teach me? What is it trying to show me about yeah. my life? Um, and then use the power of that to follow your dreams. I mean, don't waste time. Don't let people tell you you can't do something mm -hmm. um, because you can if you put your mind to it um, and believe in yourself. And like the gentleman was saying before, um, confide in your friends, yeah. share your feelings with people, talk. That is so important. You to, must to talk Not to, to bottle it up because that's yeah. the worst thing you can do. It just feels ten times worse, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, when, yeah. when I was ill, um, the first couple of years, um, I felt so lonely. Mm. There's something about having cancer that makes you feel so lonely. Like in a crowded room, you'd feel like you were the only person there mm -hmm. in your world and everyone, the, the world's kind of going on around you and you're just stuck in this vortex. But if you open up and talk to people, as yeah. soon as I found, you know, a great counsellor, my parents were amazing, my friends were amazing, everything... You need that support. Yeah, you? everything yeah, started to lighten up and I thought, yeah, this isn't as bad as I think it's yeah. going to be. Brilliant. And are, are there any people that sort of inspired you along the way or that helping you? Yeah, um, early on, um, at the time, my boyfriend's mother was um, diagnosed with myosinia gravis, which is an awful neurological disease. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and she was told hundreds of times that she probably wouldn't last six months and she's still here today. Oh, so. yeah. um, and uh, she would just party, she'd go on holiday, she'd just get on with her life. So she was a major inspiration to me when I was ill. My, my parents have always been a massive inspiration mm-hmm. to me. They, um, I couldn't have asked for better parents, you know, they've always um, supported me. And currently, I have to say, my husband, who is actually my drummer um, and musical director. <laughs> That's nice. Um, who's, here, who's over there who's watching you, right, over there, you? Mr. Alan Harries. <laughs> um, he's a massive inspiration to me to keep going because he's tr- basically trodden the same path as, a, as an artist, musician, yeah. all of his life. Okay. And sometimes there's nothing happening and you're thinking, oh, should I give up? What should I do? Yeah. Never give up. You know, because around the corner, something else comes along like this yeah. wonderful. <laughs> experience I'm having now. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> okay, so you're going to be performing for us. Can you tell us what you'll, you'll be singing? Yes. Um, the song is called Take the Fire. It's the first track from my debut album, The Girl You Left Behind. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually about being in a quite a controlling relationship. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so you're going to pop off and get, get ready for us. Yes. Okay, so... Just before I perform, I would like to say a massive thank you to Richard Anderson and More Mobile UK for sponsoring me and believing in me. Oh, brilliant. So that we have reached the end of the programme. Just let's stay there for a second. Okay. <laughs> so we have reached the end of the programme. This is going to get ready in just a second. Um, but if you do want more information about any of the guests tonight, you can visit the website chrissybshow.tv and you can also email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. Lisa, Lisa, thank you so much. And I'm thank looking forward to hearing me. the performance.
Dreamed about you every morning from the 